Hello. In this film I want to talk about lining up colour blocks for my print and today it's all I know that I'll be dealing with. I'm not going to deal with the wood block yet. I am simply going to line up some blocks for the lino. So I have my line block here and I've done some colouring in so you can see what it is that I need to create today. So I have two blocks and I've coloured them in a sort of yellowy orange and a grey to give you an idea. I need um, a block for the rocks and a block for some of the landscape. This particular bit of coast that I'm kind of basing this image on, uh, up in Scotland they, they have the most amazing kind of growth lichen I don't know if it's lichen seaweeds, I guess, on the rocks, which are really quite bright colours. The other um, inspiration for this kind of orange-grey colouring um, comes from one of my heroes, um, Egon Schiele. And I have this picture in my studio. This is um, Vali Neutzel, and I, I hope I've pronounced, pronounced her name right. She was uh, Egon Schiele's partner for, for quite a long time and his model. And I think she did his, his books as well, um, but here she is. And I just love the way the grey and the orange and the yellow work together. So sometimes, you know, inspiration from colours come from, from quite odd sources. So I'm just going to move Vali out of the way. And I need to create blocks that all line up really quite carefully because this is a bit pernickety, all these little tiny shapes here. So what I've done is to use a, a, a cardboard frame. I, when I was offsetting the woodblock, I was using this uh, plastic to um, print onto, and it's actually quite chunky. Because these blocks are very detailed, I want a lighter weight plastic and I've got one here, but unfortunately I've only got it in A4 size and because my frame will fit an A4 piece of lino it's too big so I've, I've got a little cardboard uh, window here just to make things the right size. And the first thing I need to do is to work out where my lino is going to sit for the blocks. Now this lino unusually I have stained with white ink rather than pink ink, I usually use pink, um, that's because when I get to the end of a tin, as I'm doing here, I like to use every last drop and um, once I've scooped out all the ink in here, I can pop in a bit of white spirit and use it as a stain and not waste anything. So that's why I've gone white for this. So the first thing I need to do is establish where the liner is going to sit on this backing block. And to do that, I'm going to take my line block and pop it into the frame. And you can see there's where the wood block sits when I was using that to line up. And now it's the line block's turn to do the lining up. And this will be easier to work out than with the wood block because there's no difference in thickness. The lino is all the same thickness. So I have got a big fat wood block to deal with this time. Okay, so I'm just going to put that down and take a print onto the plastic. And this this plastic, this is, um, I don't know what make it is, I bought it in Japan um, in a, an amazing big art store called Sakaido in Tokyo and um, I feel such an idiot because I didn't buy enough of it. Um, I only bought a couple of pieces and I wish I'd bought lots because it wasn't expensive and it's just so useful. Now here I've missed a little bit um, so I'm just going to go back and make sure I've got that. Um, it actually for now it's not that important because I just want the basic placement of the block so I just need to be careful to get that when it comes to inking up the lino but for the backing block it's not that important I just want a rough idea of where to put the lino so just pop that down and use a spoon for this just to 
So all I want to make sure at, the, at this stage is that there's the lino covers the area where the block falls. So I'm not that concerned with details at the moment. So a very rudimentary transfer there. And I know as long as I can't see any of that transfer, then my block's OK. So let's just make sure that we've got that there. And then I can draw around it. And stick this back down onto the backing block and then I can do my more detailed transfer. So now I have attached my new block to its backing board in the right place. I need to transfer this line uh, image onto the lino. So I'm going to ink this up again. I'm using water-based ink to do the inking up simply because it dries quickly um, and then I can get on with the cutting. So this time I'm going to be much more careful about inking up so that I get all of the lino inked because I need all that information to know which bits to cut and which bits not to cut. So I'm being particularly careful about edges. And I've cleaned off my first um, printing from the plastic. I've just wiped that off so that everything's nice and clean again. So that when I take the second impression, it's nice and sharp. I'm being much more careful about the impression that I take here to make sure that I get all the information I need because this is going to be my cutting guide. Now I can't use my original drawing to help me here um, because I've changed it as I've cut it. So in actual fact the, the original drawing doesn't look quite like the um, finished block because I drew, I drew, I transferred my original drawing onto the line block with carbon paper but then I drew over that and dip pen and ink to give me this nice expressive block so it's changed completely so the, the original drawing is of no help anymore. So let's just make sure I've got everything there. There we go, I'm pretty certain all that detail. Be careful peeling it back because you don't want to move the plastic. You want the plastic to stay stuck down to the frame because that's that's going to tell you where the registration is. So I'm just being a bit careful. And that can come out. And then this one can come in. Just make sure you've got it the right way around. If like me, it's not centered. You just need to make sure that everything is, is correct. And then can go down. And I'm going to use my metal spoon here for just putting down a quite a strong pressure rather than the barren because I'm printing from plastic onto lino, not plastic onto paper, and lino is not absorbent. So it's not going to help me at all in taking up any of the ink. I have to make that ink stick down to the lino. So a spoon is a good way of doing that. This reminds me of those transfers you used to get. When I was a kid, you used to be able to buy um, 
a kit which had like a, a background and then it came with transfers of animals and you could rob the back and put them down so it was sort of things like dinosaurs or jungle animals or something and then you could rob them and put them down into the right place um, I've only just remembered those I've forgotten about those I suppose they still do them because I used to love those when I was a kid. Okay, and uh, in there. giving me all the information I need. So now what I have here is not a very pretty print, but it has all the information I need about where the rocks sit. And I've also got a bit of wiggle room because I've got this black outline. So when I come to cut this in the next film, I will be cutting and allowing some wiggle room so that I can make some fine tuning adjustments when I cut those blocks. So this is the first block of the two um, separate blocks that I want and I'm going to do exactly the same thing and then I'll have both my colour blocks marked out and ready to cut. So I hope you found that useful and I hope you'll join me for the next uh, film in this series. Don't forget to subscribe and if you've liked the film, hit the like button because that really helps. And I'll see you again soon.